Women have been a powerful force in shaping Catholicism in Philadelphia. Philadelphia Catholicism would not be what it is today without women religious who in many ways created a larger percentage of it. Until relatively recently, for your average Catholic woman, if she had a desire to be educated, to do meaningful work, she looked within the Catholic Church. They were sometimes the most highly educated members of the Catholic communities where they were ministering. Because of that, they became aware of their own relationships with social justice and social injustice. You have this fantastic contribution of women religious uh, in the archdiocese, and the orders are too numerous to mention. If it fit within their mission, they were largely free to do the kind of work that they thought was important. You have sisters in almost every Catholic school. This is sisters who literally made possible the creation of the largest parochial school system in the nation. Educating kids at a very young age themselves, the women religious, are doing it for nothing. So the Catholic Church had a ready supply, a large supply of very underpaid labor. In 1965, there were over 180,000 Catholic sisters in the United States. Today, there are only about 50,000. They're not publicly identified with the religious habit anymore. Catholic nuns were told, change your name. Subsume your individual life in the spirit of the group. We're all in this together. And it's not so much about the individual. One affluent young woman, Catherine Drexel, shocked Philadelphia when she embraced communal religious life. Catherine Drexel's the wealthiest woman in Philadelphia, the wealthiest woman with, along with her sisters in the country at one point. Catherine had a lovely house on Walnut Street. She had everything that anyone could possibly want. She attended balls and teas and attended the Centennial in Philadelphia in great style. She came from a family that saw wealth as a responsibility, not something to be used for luxury. After a lot of soul searching and a lot of prayer, she decides that she should enter religious life. She should become a nun. So many family members and mentors were saying to her, oh, don't do that. You can sit in your beautiful house and you can write checks. Don't go out and get your hands dirty. Truthfully, relatives were very threatened by her commitment to social parity and justice. Why would someone of her upbringing and stature take a path like this to give that up? Was it a betrayal of all she had inherited? But her calling was to serve the people she thought the church neglected most, African Americans and Native Americans. Philadelphia was home to at least 22,000 African Americans. The church wasn't doing its part to evangelize among this group of potential Catholics. In the 19th century, finding an order, specifically working with the African and Native American peoples, was a challenge. She found her own religious order, which at the time she called the Sisters of the Blessed Sacraments for Indians and Colored People. She and her sisters purchased the mansion that became St. Peter Claver School. By founding a religious congregation and by becoming a religious superior, Catherine Drexel was able to determine for herself how she was going to use her money. She was giving $100,000 a year to the church. Catholics in America were donating altogether $75,000 a year. So she was giving more than all the other 12 million Catholics in America. Philadelphia Catholics have an enduring affinity for Catherine Drexel. Catherine Drexel was the only Philadelphia-born Catholic saint.